instead of making a general call for an Uber, how we can t tell our Uber driver before we get to him what's our destination. And to do that, we are going to use uh, an API called Place Autocomplete by Google. And I'm going to pull up the, the web page right here. And I'm going to link it down below so you can check it now. And you probably use this API in any other app. So yeah, it may be familiar to you and you are going to, to learn how you can use it. It is really simple. I've had people ask about this and that's why I'm making this lesson and I thought it would be interesting for all of you to learn. So let's get right into it and grab our Uber project. One more thing, I've made the font a bit larger. Please tell me if that's good enough or if you want more or less. Just let me know down in the comment section. Thank you very much. And now, the first thing that we are going to, to do is to add a dependency. And I'm going just to grab it from here. In, it is a card view dependency. It just makes the, the app look nicer. Otherwise, the place out on complete would look a bit bland and hard to see. So it is always good to add it when you are uh, uh, using a place auto complete. Okay, so it has finished uh, loading the Gradle and now let's get into the customer map because that's where the place uh, auto complete is going to, to be. And uh, because we are using a frame layout, we are going to change this a bit and we are going to grab both buttons that are up top and move them to below the fragment, the map fragment. And then we are going to embed them in a relative layout. Wrap content, wrap content. Okay. And the reason we are going to do that is because Below them, we are going to use a card uh, card view, which match parent width and height wrap content. Let's just put a margin of 20 to make it look nicer. And now, we are going to put the, to place the place auto complete inside the card view. And I'm going to grab again the the web page of the place autocomplete and I'm going to grab this fragment just that it is all you need to do basically when it comes to front end and now because we are using a relative layout we must tell the card view that it is below these buttons and to do that we only need to tell uh, the card view that it is below one of the buttons because it is then automatically be below the other let's say settings and it is oh okay now you must say align parent right set to true because the gravity isn't enough and there we go it is the front end is completed so now let's get into the part interesting part of the code and now i'm going to wrap the the database and i'm going to explain to you how you're going to do so, as you know, uh, now we store the customer ride ID every time there is a customer request and you are the chosen driver to make, to fulfill that request. Now, because we want to add a destination, we are going to create a child inside here that's going to be, I don't know, something like customer request. And then inside, we are going to put a destination. And inside the customer request, again, the customer ride ID. So the customer ride ID will stop being in here out of nowhere. It will be, uh, it will be stored inside this customer request. So I hope you understood that. If not, you will understand it better when we actually start developing it and using the app and you see the database change so first thing first we are going to add a string of the, uh, of the type a string with the name destination destination 
And now, again, we are going to go to our place autocomplete and we are going to grab this code. Oops. And this code is what allows us to get the string that the user chooses. So the destination that the user chooses. And we are going to place it under settings. Give it some space. Okay. And now, as you can see from here, and I don't know if it says in here, let me just check. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. We want a name, and they already give us that using this place.getName. And you probably can get more information, but let me just check in a second. So, first off, we are going to set, uh, set the destination equal to place dot ah, and as you can see you can get a lot of information but with the get name you're going to get exactly what the user chose which is normally the city or the place whatever so get name dot to string you can cut this log we don't need it the error we don't need as well so we can collapse that okay so that's all said and done. Now that we have our destination, we must uh, change the the way that we place the request inside the user's dri uh, the driver's uh, child a bit. So to do that, we are going to go to the get closest driver uh, function, which is uh, get closest driver, which is this one. Okay, and inside here is uh, inside is where we um, get the the driver that's closer to us, as you can remember, using GeoFire and Ge uh, GeoQuery. And when we find it, when if we find the the driver, we place the the child customer ride ID inside the driver's child. So now we must do some changes because we are going to create another child and store the customer ride ID inside it and the destination inside it as well so first off we create a child customer request okay and now we just double this say destination and destination and that's it now we must do the main part of the code is done, but we need to do some small changes to the code because uh, otherwise it will fail. So, for example, when you, you delete the... when you cancel a ride, as you can see up here, which is the M request, and when you cancel, we just remove the value customer ride ID. That's not enough right now because we have two uh, childs inside it and because we have a child prior to this one so it isn't enough so we're going to grab the customer request place it here or better yet we can simply say yeah that makes a lot more sense we can simply set this value to true and that will override the entire uh, child so yeah I believe that's better let's go like this and if you set it to true then the the customer request that appears below it will automatically disappear because this true will override it so that's it so yeah in the where is the error <laughs> catch the error let me just see oh semicolon okay so now we can move on to the driver side of things so we want to show the driver what the destination is and it is really simple all we need to do is first of all add another text view and this text view will have the customer destination and mm, padding top it doesn't have need to to have it okay and let's add the text which will be the default text because the user may not choose the destination you aren't forced to do so so destination 
this will and this string will appear to the to the driver every time the 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 customer doesn't choose a destination. So yeah, let's go to the driver. And in the driver, we must first of all do the that boring stuff of adding the the text field, connecting to the text field. Destination. Edit in here with the find view by IDs. Just make it bigger, okay. Okay, okay, now we are going to make some changes inside, let me just find it, inside customer ride ID. So uh, first of all we need to add a child, the child uh, customer request, request, which is created inside the driver, uh, the driver's main child. So now I'm going to separate these things. You could could do with using just one fu function, but to keep things separated and in order to be easier for people to add the code later, I'm going to create another child which is going to do basically the same as this one. So yeah, it isn't the best code practice, but I believe it would be easier for everyone to to do it like this. So let's remove info and instead of info, let's do destination. Now we can simply copy and paste that and get the same customer. And we are going to do a lot of changes, so don't worry. And when you paste it here, you are going to, to do get customer destination. We are going to alter all of this so you can actually go ahead and remove this. Let me just check if you can remove the else. No, the else will be needed, but you can cut that out. Customer request. And then we are going to change the, the database ref, which will now be destination. You can add a single event listener, not a value event listener, it, it isn't necessary. And now we just add the string of the destination, get value to string, yeah, that's right. And now simply call the end customer at destination, we're going to set the text to the the destination that we found, but first off, you are going to add the text destination so the user knows what we are talking about. Plus destination, and now in the else is uh, you the else is called whenever the user called an Uber but didn't set a destination. So when that's done, just for redundancy, add the default text. Okay, so now we must go up top, so when the drive ends, that's for a complete redundancy, if, when the drive ends, we must add again this text, just to clear everything up. And now, uh, for one error that I found, let me see, where it was, get assigned customer info, okay. Uh, don't forget to add this uh, get child count because I saw some people with problems because of this get child count so don't forget to add it and yeah that's it I'm going just to, to run the app show that uh, it works and yeah let's go from there okay guys so it has finished loading successfully Let's go ahead and try to type something in the customer side of things, which is the right one and the driver one is the left one. So as you can see, it looks nice. 
let's say Louisville, which is the city that I always use. Okay, now call Uber, getting your driver, and I believe I must send a GPS signal, otherwise it won't work, and yes. And it is working. As you can see, it appears the destination in here. I don't know if you can see it because the, the, the font is small, but it is there. And let's check the uh, database. And as you can see, the customer request goes in here. The driver is working. There's a customer request. There's a destination. Let's just cancel it. And everything should return to normal. And it is. So yeah, it is drivers still in drivers working because because I'm using an, an emulator, I can't force a GPS update. So if you click send, then it should go to drivers available and it did. So yeah, everything is working just fine. Thank you all very much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I always try to respond to you as fast as possible. Um, yeah. If you can, please subscribe if these lessons are being helpful to you. That way you can mutually help each other out. And I want to grow this channel in order to push out more and more videos. And that's the way that I would be able to do it. So in the next lesson, I don't know, but I believe it will be something a bit more, a bit different because uh, I was asked to do a, a video where I explained how you can get the, the code from github and actually implement it yourself and so i'll explain it it is a, a fast video it's just how you can connect your firebase uh, account with the with the project that you download it is fast but just to make it simple for new guys that want to jump ahead the the first lesson so yeah that's all for today thank you all very much for watching again i see you again tomorrow and ciao California.